Hack's eyes fluttered open as the first rays of Julius Nine's sun filtered through the window. For a moment, he was disoriented, his body tensed for the familiar rumble of a ship's engine. Then reality washed over him, they were free, planet-side safe. He stretched luxuriously, his paws sinking into the softest bedding he'd ever experienced. After years of sleeping on hard, cramped bunks, this felt like a dream. Hacked allowed himself a few more minutes to simply enjoy the comfort, his whiskers twitching contentedly. The peace was broken by a gentle chime from the main living area. Curious, Hacked scampered out of his room, nearly colliding with a bleary-eyed Killian in the hallway. What in the blazes Killian grumbled, but his complaint died on his lips as they entered the living room. Lyra stood there, flanked by a small team, all bearing trays laden with an array of mouth-watering dishes. The scent alone was enough to make Hack's stomach growl audibly. Good morning, Lyra chirped, seemingly immune to the early hour. We thought you might enjoy a proper Julius Nine breakfast. As the rest of the crew stumbled in, drawn by the commotion and the irresistible aromas, Hack's eyes widened at the feast before them. There were fluffy pastries drizzled with colorful sauces, steaming bowls of what looked like grain but shimmered with an iridescent sheen, and fruits in sheen, and fruits in shapes and colors he'd never seen before. Is that? Is that glow berry compote one of the crew members gasped, reaching for a bowl of luminescent purple jam? Act remembered Jeb's stories about the delicacies of his homeworld. The captain had described the glow berries with such longing that the crew had often joked about risking it all for just a taste. As they dug in, savoring flavors that put their bland ship rations to shame, Hack noticed the state of the kitchen. It was a mess, with empty containers and dirty dishes strewn about. He vaguely recalled some of the crew raiding the well-stocked pantry in the middle of the night, too excited and hungry to wait until morning. Lyra, noticing his gaze, just smiled. Don't worry about the mess. We understand you were eager to try everything. There's plenty more where that came from. As Hack bit into a pastry that seemed to melt on his tongue, he felt a warmth spreading through him that had nothing to do with the food. This wasn't just breakfast. It was a welcome, a celebration, a promise of the life they could now have. For the first time since landing on Julius 9, Hack allowed himself to fully relax. The suspicion and wariness that had been his constant companions for so long began to ebb away, replaced by a cautious optimism. As he looked around at his crewmates, their faces alight with joy and wonder, Hack knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them with full stomachs and grateful hearts. As the crew was finishing up their breakfast, savoring the last bites of the Julius Nine delicacies, the door chimed. Hack's ears perked up as Jeb walked in looking refreshed and carrying an ornate box under his arm. Morning, everyone, Jeb said, his eyes twinkling with a mischief hacked hadn't seen in years. Hope you're enjoying your first real meal in a while. The crew murmured their appreciation, still too engrossed in the food to respond properly. Jeb chuckled, then turned to Killian. Killian, old friend, he said, holding out the box. I believe it's long past time I gave you a proper birthday present. Killian's eyebrows shot up in surprise. Captain I, I don't even remember when my birthday is anymore. Then today's as good a day as any Jeb replied, pressing the box into Killian's hands. With uncharacteristic hesitation, Killian opened the box. His eyes widened as he pulled out an ornate sidearm, its metal gleaming in the morning light. Well, I'll be damned Killian breathed, a rare smile spreading across his face. A Colt M1911. Haven't seen one of these beauties in years. Hack tilted his head in confusion. What kind of weapon is that? It doesn't look like any blaster I've seen. Jeb grinned. That, Hacked, is a projectile weapon. It fires small metal projectiles called bullets. Bullets Hack's whiskers twitched with curiosity. But aren't energy weapons more advanced? Killian chuckled expertly checking the weapon's mechanism. Sometimes, furball, older is better. These babies don't overheat, can't be deflected by energy shields, and pack one hell of a punch. Plus, Jeb added, they're part of Julius Nine's culture. We believe in self-reliance and the right to self-defense. Projectile weapons are a symbol of that. 
As Hacked absorbed this information, Lyra stepped forward, holding a stack of data pads. Speaking of self-reliance, she said, we have something else for you all. She began distributing the pads to each crew member. Hack took his, his paws trembling slightly as he activated it. These are your personal accounts, Lyra explained. All your winnings from the races, they're yours now. Our cyber team managed to unlock the accounts frozen by the Empire and race officials. Hack's eyes widened as he saw the figure on his screen. It was more money than he'd ever imagined possessing. Looking around, he saw similar expressions of shock and joy on his crewmates' faces. Gillian, who had been racing the longest, let out a low whistle as he checked his account. I could buy my own moon with this, he muttered. For a moment, the room was filled with excited chatter as the crew discussed their newfound wealth. But then Killian fell silent, a thoughtful look crossing his face. You know, he said slowly, there was this little bar on a backwater moon in the Rigel system. Always thought it'd be nice to have a place like that of my own someday. Jeb clapped him on the shoulder. Why not go for it? You've certainly earned it. Killian nodded, then paused. But what about the fight? The rebellion? Jeb's expression softened. That's the beauty of freedom, Killian. The choice is yours to make. As Hacked watched this exchange, he felt a swell of emotion. This wasn't just about money or gifts. It was about having options, about being able to choose their own paths for the first time in years. The room fell silent as Killian contemplated Jeb's words. The grizzled weapons officer turned the ornate pistol over in his hands, his face a mask of deep thought. You know, Killian finally said, his gravelly voice softer than usual, I've been dreaming about that little bar for years. Thought it'd be my ticket to a quiet life after all this madness. Axe whiskers drooped slightly. The thought of losing Killian, who had been a constant, albeit gruff, presence throughout their racing ordeal, was unexpectedly painful. But Killian wasn't finished. He looked up, meeting Jeb's eyes with a fierce determination. Thing is, Cap, I reckon that bar can wait a bit longer. This fight you're talking about? It's too important to sit out. A collective sigh of relief went through the crew. Jeb's face broke into a wide grin as he clapped Killian on the shoulder. Glad to hear it, old friend Jeb said. Wouldn't be the same without you watching our backs. Inspired by Killian's decision, Hacked felt a surge of courage. He stepped forward, his small frame standing as tall as it could. I want to keep fighting too, Captain Hacked squeaked, his voice steadier than he felt. You've given us our freedom. The least we can do is help others gain theirs. One by one, the rest of the crew voiced their agreement. The room filled with a palpable sense of purpose and unity that Hacked had never experienced before, even in their closest races. Jeb looked around at his crew, his family, with pride shining in his eyes. I can't tell you how much this means, he said, his voice thick with emotion. But I want you all to understand something. This isn't like the races. You're not prisoners anymore. If at any point you want to leave, to start that bar or do anything else, you have that right. Killian snorted, a sound that was as close to a laugh as Hacked had ever heard from him. Fat chance of that, Cap. We've come this far together. Might as well see it through to the end. As the crew began to disperse, discussing their plans and the fight ahead, Hacked felt a newfound sense of belonging. They weren't just survivors anymore, forced together by circumstance. They were a team, united by choice and a common cause. Axe's paw brushed against the data pad in his pocket, reminding him of the wealth now at his disposal. But as he looked around at his crewmates, he realized that he had already found something far more valuable than money a purpose, and a family to share it with. The race for survival was over. The fight for freedom for themselves and for others was just beginning, and hacked, the once timid Hibbard navigator, was ready to chart this new course alongside his crew. As the day progressed, Hacked found himself drawn back to the fleet headquarters in Arizona. His curiosity about Julius Nine's military capabilities had been piqued, and he was eager to learn more about the fight they were joining. The headquarters was a hive of activity. Hacked's sensitive ears picked up a cacophony of voices, the hum of advanced technology, and the rhythmic march of soldiers. 
As he made his way through the bustling corridors, he noticed he wasn't alone in his curiosity. Several other former racers were there, eagerly absorbing information about Julius IX's fleet and military structure. A friendly officer noticed Hack's bewildered expression and approached him. First time here, she asked with a smile. I'm Lieutenant Vex. Can I help you with anything? Hack nodded enthusiastically. I'm Hacked, former navigator of the Broken Promise. I was hoping to learn more about your fleet operations. We've pledged to join the fight, but, well, racing ships are quite different from military vessels. Vex's eyes lit up. A navigator, we could certainly use your skills. Come with me, I'll show you our command center. As Vex led Hack through a series of high-tech rooms, explaining the various systems and protocols, Hack felt a growing sense of excitement. This was so much more advanced than anything he'd worked with before, yet he could see how his racing experience could be applied. Suddenly, alarms blared throughout the building. Hack's fur stood on end as he saw officers rushing to their stations. What's happening, he squeaked, his old instincts kicking in. Vex's face was grim. Looks like we've got some Empire sympathizers causing trouble in the city center. Stay here, you'll be safe. But her words were cut off by the sound of gunfire, not from within the headquarters, but from the streets outside. Hacked rushed to a window, his eyes widening at the scene below. Citizens of Arizona, armed with a variety of weapons, were engaging the attackers. Their coordination and skill were impressive, quickly subduing the threat before the official security forces could even arrive on the scene. By the cosmic void Hacked breathed. Is this normal? Vex smiled proudly. Welcome to Julius 9, Hacked. Every citizen here is trained and ready to defend our freedom. It's not just a right, it's a responsibility we all share. As Hacked watched the citizens efficiently handle the situation, a new respect for Julius IX's culture bloomed within him. This wasn't just a planet, it was a society built on the very principles of freedom and self-reliance that they had been fighting for all along. Turning to Vex, Hack's voice was filled with determination. Lieutenant, how do I get one of those sidearms? I want to be able to help too, to be a hero like them. Vex nodded approvingly. That's the spirit, Hacked. Come on, let's get you set up. Something tells me you'll fit in just fine here on Julius 9. As they headed towards the armory, Hacked felt a surge of pride and purpose. He wasn't just learning about a new way of life, he was becoming a part of it. The race for survival had shaped him into a skilled navigator, but this new chapter would transform him into something more a defender of freedom. As the sun began to set over Arizona, casting a warm glow across the city, Hacked found himself back at the fleet headquarters. This time, however, he wasn't alone. The large auditorium was filled with former racers, their faces a mix of anticipation and nervousness. Jeb stood at the front of the room, his presence commanding as always. But there was something different about him now, a lightness, a sense of purpose that Hacked had never seen before. Friends, Jeb began, his voice carrying easily through the room. We've all been through hell together. We've raced, we've fought, we've survived. But now, we have a choice to make. Act felt a ripple of tension go through the crowd. Choice was still a new concept for many of them. Julius Nine has given us our freedom, Jeb continued. They've given us a home, resources, a chance at a new life. But they've also shown us what we're fighting for a galaxy where everyone has these same opportunities. Jeb paused, his eyes sweeping across the room. I'm asking you now, not as your captain, but as your friend who among you wants to join this fight, who wants to help bring freedom to others, just as it was brought to us. For a moment there was silence. Then, slowly at first, but quickly gaining momentum, hands began to raise. Hack's paw shot up without hesitation, his heart swelling with pride as he saw Killian, still clutching his new sidearm, raise his hand as well. Within minutes, nearly every hand in the room was raised, the energy was palpable, a mix of determination, hope, and a shared sense of purpose. Jeb's face broke into a wide smile. He nodded to Lyra and the other guides, who stepped forward with data pads in hand. These, Jeb explained, gesturing to the pads are enlistment forms. By signing them, you'll officially become soldiers of Julius 9. 
but I want you all to understand this is your choice. There's no shame in walking away, in choosing a different path. As the guides began distributing the pads, Hacked found his paws shaking slightly as he took his. This was it the moment where he truly took control of his destiny. Around him, he could see his fellow racers signing without hesitation. Killian, usually so gruff and cynical, had a look of fierce pride as he put his name down. When it was Hack's turn, he paused for just a moment. He thought of all they'd been through, of the freedom they'd found here on Julius 9, of the citizens he'd seen defending their home. With a deep breath, he signed his name. As the last of the forms were collected, a cheer went up from the crowd. It wasn't the desperate celebration of surviving another race, but something deeper, more meaningful. They were no longer just survivors, they were volunteers, choosing to fight for something bigger than themselves. Jeb's voice cut through the noise, filled with emotion. Welcome to the Julius 9 Defense Force, soldiers. We've got a galaxy to liberate. As Hack looked around at his fellow recruits, his family, he felt a sense of belonging stronger than anything he'd ever experienced. The race that had defined their lives for so long was truly over. A new journey was beginning one of purpose, of hope, of freedom. Thank you so much for listening to this story. I hope you loved it. Please remember to subscribe if you did like it so you can see more videos like this. And please give us a like and a comment too. I'll see you in the next one.